it's really sort of new for me. Well, you know, one of the things, one of the many things we love about you is that, you know, you really are so open sharing, you know, your experiences and growing up and, you know, you know, the power of a dollar. I mean, I remember when you got signed on to This Is Us, you had 81 cents in your bank account. So, you know, it makes so much sense for you to partner with, you know, a financial entity to sort of help people navigate some of the worst things that you have to do, like finding a car. Um, so tell me about this partnership with Capital One Auto Navigator. Yeah, you know, that's such a good point. And it is the reason why I decided to partner with the companies I do, because I think car buying can be very overwhelming and very intimidating. And Capital One Auto Navigator partnering with them and realizing this really amazing digital tool makes car buying easier. I'm like, yeah, we need this. We need things that make life easier for us and that are accessible. Mm -hmm. And the digital tool really makes it awesome because you can literally search for cars mm -hmm. on the app. You pre-qualify, you understand what your monthly rate can be before you even get to the dealership. And it doesn't affect your credit score. So you're like, oh, it's just all win-win. And if you can set yourself up for success before you even get to the dealership, it's like, oh, just, you know, it just makes it easier. And I, I just, I just love the whole messaging behind it. And I, I want to help people and I, I get it. I, you know, I've been there. I've, I've been there. It's, yeah. It's like having your computer, like looking for a computer. It is so hard. And then right now everything's so expensive, you know? I, know, I know, I know. And being able to know what, after you search for the car and, and knowing what, you know, you can afford after you've qualified, um, you know, cause sometimes when you get to the dealership and you're like, oh, I want this car, but I don't know if I can afford it. And the waiting, you know, having all that sort of set up for you is just chef's kiss. It's yes, wonderful. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Seriously, seriously. Yeah. Well, that that is that is good. So that's that's something we can all take to the bank. Um, yeah. And I have to say, it is it is so great to see you. I think we're like living in the afterglow of This Is Us. It's just such a beautiful series. Um, and I've always wanted to ask you, working with Ken Olin, the director. Um, I have to say, I was a huge 30 something fan. Like I was hardcore. So when I saw this series coming out, it just has that, um, that feeling. It's like a visceral feeling that This Is Us had. What was it like working with him? And did you kind of see how his vision was, I don't know, just incredible? Yeah, I'm so glad you brought Ken Olin up. I don't think he gets his, he doesn't get enough credit for all the incredible um, storytelling that he was a part of. I mean, I think he ended up directing 35 episodes. And for me, I hate to play favorites, but he was one of my favorites. He just, as an actor, of course, he's a storyteller. And then as a director, we speak a shorthand and he got the tone of the show. And of course, obviously from 30 something, it would just, it just, it, it was like a, a perfect storm of, of just having that experience of he could literally say Chrissy Abj and I would know exactly what he meant <laughs> at that point like he didn't even have to finish a sentence and we all knew exactly what he needed or what he wanted or what we didn't capture yet and it was just such a dream and a gift to work with him and I just love him you know I just respect him so much and he is brilliant and um it just made the whole experience really wonderful because you, know, you can get guest directors who want to be, of course, involved in the show. Mm -hmm. And then you get ones that it, they're so much more involved. It, it's just who they are. You know, it's a, it's a very different experience. So, yeah, no, did he, because he's been in the business for such a, a long time and he's had so many experiences. Did he give you any kind of advice also going forward? Because you, you know, that's the thing you are Kate Pearson. I mean, and you're going to have this long career. So what kind of advice did he give you, you know, going forward into your It's career? interesting. He, he didn't really give me advice as much as, you know, he's like, oh, what are you up to next? And what do you want to do? And he would say like, oh, I think that would be, you know, that, that's a good idea. Or yeah, you should really do this. Um, but never, you know, imposing anything. Yeah. And um, I'm sure that if I had any questions, he would be there to ask. So now I feel like, I missed the, I, I, I got to call him because <laughs> I'm like, maybe there's some, some answers. I need some, some advice that I, I need that I didn't think I needed. So. 
Well, I'm sure he'll be coming to one of your shows. I saw your book very soon. Your voice, Chrissy. My God, your voice. Oh, this is like, yeah, no. I mean, it's like you're acting, though. How? Tell me about this upcoming tour. Yeah. So, you know, music was something I've always wanted to pursue and what I thought I was going to do. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, 12 years in L.A. and kicking around and trying to just get off the ground. Um, I just knew that. I wanted to keep songwriting and I was songwriting, but then during hiatuses between the show, I came out to Nashville and we would, we would write songs. And so now to be able to share them with the world, you know, and it's really about the past 10 years of my life and everything that I've sort of come through and still need to heal from. Um, I'm excited. I'm really glad to be doing it. And just to, it's such a gift to be able to do what you love to do mm -hmm. and to have the ability to, storytell it just you know when we're storytelling on you know through a monologue on a tv show or we're storytelling with music it's you know it's the same thing um except now i'm chrissy like i just get to be me and not hide behind somebody else's words and behind a character so i'm excited but i'm um i'm also nervous because i just i want people to love it and i want people to be inspired and leave with with inspiration and, and hope and, and love and, you know, all, all that, so. Yeah, yeah, and and also the whole live, performing live. Um, how are you getting prepared for that? <laughs> yeah, so we've been rehearsing, my band and I, we've been rehearsing here in Asheville and just practicing, you know, you don't wanna over-practice because you don't wanna run something into the ground, but also just, just feeling comfortable. And that's another thing is it's, it's really sort of new for me, you know? Um, I, you know, got to perform at the Opry a few times and, you know, places around here, but a full on, you know, seven city tour, it's a new thing. So I always love that idea when you go to a show and you don't know what's gonna happen, yeah. you know, like for, for better, for worse, yeah. like that's the, excite the excitement. And so that's sort of, a, I'm looking forward to that. So we'll see. Yeah, I cannot yeah. wait to see. Well, I hope I hope Ken does make it to one of the performances. No, me Very too. Cool. That would be cool. Yeah. And also, I got to ask you about the children's book. How cool? Yeah. How, where did that come from? So Bradley and I, um, you know, we started dating during the pandemic. And I think you really get to know somebody when you're sort of stuck in a house with them or you literally are only seeing them because, yeah. you know, you want to be safe. And it really... It was something I always wanted to do. I've always wanted to write a children's book. I have nine nieces and nephews. I taught preschool. And as cheesy as it sounds, like children really are the future. Like they really, really are. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so important to impart and instill beautiful, um, encouraging words and to inspire them to, to know that they're loved and accepted. And that's something that, I know uh, through teaching and through, you know, my nieces and nephews that like, we don't hear enough of, like you can never love somebody too much. Mm -hmm. You could, you can never. And um, that's not always cultivated because I know we want to build strong foundations, mm -hmm. but we also need them to be, you know, full of encouraging words and love. And so that was really the impetus of us writing the book and really about, so many people we know that want to have children, whether they're biological or adopted or fostered, you know, um, these children become grownups who change the world, you know, and sometimes they change the world even before they're grownups. So that was really the, the inspiration behind it. I love that. I love that. Well, you're such a role model. And now it's so nice, though, that you are moving right into seamlessly into the music and the writing and we won't have to miss you, you know, because that's what happens sometimes when our beloved series and yeah. we, we miss so so they can they can catch you on stage and yeah. they can read the book. And I'm sure something else is next too, but uh, we'll have to stay tuned. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs>